Uh, so hi, I'm Professor Kreitziger, and I'm here today to demonstrate our Nursing Fundamentals 103 Cardiovascular Exam. Um, so I have my student Trent here. Thank you very much. No Appreciate problem. it. Um, okay, so first of all, I'm going to start out by describing some of the heart sounds that we'll be listening for. So we have uh, two that we should hear in every patient, hopefully, also regular, S1 and S2. So S1 is uh, the mitral and tricuspid valves closing. That's what we're listening for, and that's the start of systole. S2 is uh, the aortic and pulmonic valves closing, that's the start of diastole. So every sound that you're listening for, you can kind of um, see where it fits in there. Is it a systolic sound or a diastolic sound? So we have S3 and S4, those are the gallop rhythms. S3 is, uh, if you hear it, it's usually not normal and it occurs in diastole right after S2. Uh, so that's usually, um, that can be a sign of heart failure in our patients. So you want to listen especially for that one. S4 is um, an extra gallop sound that could occur right before S1. So those are both diastolic sounds. Uh, if there's a murmur, it could be a, like a blowing or a swishing sound that can occur anywhere in the cardiac cycle, systolic, diastolic, throughout, whatever. So we're going to listen for, um, you know, for both low pitch and high pitch sounds just in case there's a murmur that's either one of those. Um, a thrill is something that we can feel. It's like the, a purring kind of cat vibration. And um, uh, a brewy is sort of like a murmur, but it occurs in a vessel that's away from the heart. So that would be something that we could hear, and it's usually low pitched. So, uh, first, I guess I introduced myself, but I'm Mr. Kreisker. So, can you tell me your name and date of birth? Trenton Bowden, 060895. Great, thanks. Um, so I'm going to start out with a couple of questions for you. Um, have you ever been diagnosed with heart murmur? I have not. Okay. Do you have any um, high blood pressure? Anybody ever tell you you have high blood pressure? No. Okay. Take any medicines for your heart at all? I do not. Okay. Great. All right. So um, first of all, I would get my um, my client's vital signs, especially my heart rate and uh, blood pressure. And if it was, um, if there was anything irregular about that heart rate, I would also um, want to do an apical heart rate. So, um, I'll get to that in a little bit too. So, um, first of all, I would, um, I want to look at my client's skin color and stuff. Actually, I'm going to start with your feet if that's okay. Sure. Okay. So we'll talk about some of the vascular things um, because you know cardiovascular is both like cardiac, like central, and it's also vascular, which is peripheral. So I'm going to. Um, Take a look at some of your pulses here. I'm going to do your radial pulse. I'm always going to be comp comparing side to side. Great amount of zero to four. Can you, yeah, thanks. I'm going to do your um, your brachial pulses as well. These can be a little bit hard to find, but that's good. And your skin is nice and pink and warm, and there's no swelling anywhere. There's nothing that looks, you know, like you have any cardiac issues. Um, but typically, our clients, sorry, I'm just going to pull these up, thanks, mm -hmm. for already having your shoes off and stuff. I'm going to take a look um, particularly at your feet. I'm going to skip your femoral because that's, you know, we don't need to do that because you have good circulation down here. Um, all right, so um, if you need to do a popliteal pulse, um, you, know, you would need to do that if you didn't have very good circulation down here or if you need to get a thigh blood pressure for any reason. Um, okay, so I'm looking for edema. I'm going to do your dorsalis pedis pulse. These are really important. If you can't get these, you do need to get a Doppler to check that because we need to get, um, we need to be certain that our patient has circulation down here. I'm also going to do your um, posterior tibial pulses right here because these, these two do different areas of circulation. Okay, so you have about a plus two in both of these. And I can see that you have, you know, a, a lot of hair and stuff. Your skin isn't smooth and shiny. Um, you're not like red or you don't have pallor. So, um, and you don't have thickened toenails. So I don't think that you have um, arterial disease down here. I don't see any edema or any of that brown pigmentation um, that would lead me to think that maybe you had some venous insufficiency. So um, those are two really important things that we need to look for. Your skin is intact as well. So typically our patients with altered circulation have really high risk of skin breakdown. So we also need to go look for that. And I'm gonna gel because it's a shampoo. So yeah, those are some really important things that we need to look for. So as far as the, um, oh, and don't don't forget to, um, can you wiggle your toes for me? If you can do that and any numbness or tingling? No. Okay, so if we're thinking of like color motion sensation, like that's, how we'd want to do that. Uh, okay, so as far as like the central 
part of the cardiac exam. I brought two different stethoscopes because I wanted to show you two different ways to do this and it kind of depends if you have a separate bell and diaphragm or if you have the tunable diaphragm because we want to be sure to both listen for low pitch sounds and high pitch sounds across the entire pericordium or pre precordial area. So I'm going to take your shirt down here, if you don't mind. Okay. All right, so I'm looking for any kind of like heaves or anything that makes me think that the heart is beating excessively. And in your fifth intercostal space here, I'm going to just feel, can you lean forward for me? Sure. Yes. I'm going to, okay, so I can feel your PMI right there. And that's also the space that I would do your apical pulse for a full minute if I was going to give you any cardiac medications or if you had any dysrhythmias or anything like that. So I'm going to listen five, spa five spaces here, the second intercostal space. Uh, second intercostal space on this side, third intercostal space, fourth, and then that same uh, mitral for the PMI. Um, so I'm going to listen for a complete cardiac cycle at each spot, so the lub and the dub, and listen for any abnormalities like I talked about before. Okay, so on this one, separate bell and diaphragm, so I'm going to have to listen to all those spaces twice. Okay, so your aortic, I'm going to listen for the lub, dub, okay, pulmonic, Herbs point, okay, tricuspid, and the mitral, okay, and I'm going to flip it over to the bell side for low pitches, and the same thing. Great, so I don't hear anything, um, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you with a tunable diaphragm how you can do that. So I would listen for a complete cardiac cycle, pressing firmly for the diaphragm, which gives you the high pitch sounds, and then to the complete cardiac cycle, love, dub, and anything else um, lightly, which gives me the bell or the low pitch sounds. Okay. And it's actually only one side. Okay, so I'm going to push firmly. Okay, and then lightly. Okay. Try cuspid. Okay. All right. So I don't hear anything abnormal that's low pitched or high pitched. I don't hear any murmurs. I don't hear any split sounds. Looking really exciting. You don't want to be excited. Right. Yeah. Um, and before I forget, I'm also going to look for jugular venous distension. So can you turn your head over this way for me? Okay, so I don't see any um, anything there, and I'm also going to feel just for your carotid pulses there as well, one at a time. Okay. All right, so that concludes our exam. No abnormal findings. You look great. Any questions at all? I do not. Okay, great. Thanks. Right, no problem.